by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome back to our morning show morning program goes by the name of Rise and Shine. As usual, let's begin by listening to the beautiful verses of the Holy Quran. Now remember, whenever the Quran is being recited, then we should stop whatever we are doing and give our full attention to the Quran. Listen carefully, those that are speaking, those that are doing any other tasks, then for a few moments, please put them to a side and listen to the glorious Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wattini wa zaytuni wa لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين ليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله سبحان الله صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم مدى viewers of مدني channel viewers of rise and shine الحمد لله يا عزيز ربي have listened to we have and الحمد لله this is honestly it's a blessing ما شاء الله that is surveyed by watching مدني channel in the morning you can begin your day by listening to the verses of the Quran and please also make it a habit of yours to recite the Quran also my dear viewers and so make it a habit of yours to recite the Quran each and every single day be that five minutes ten minutes if possible as much as as much as possible as much as you can if it's difficult then even a little a few minutes a few verses of the Quran at least now alhamdulillah after having listened to the Quran let's move on to the naat of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam sallallahu alayka ya ya rasulallah wa 
पूजा मन पूजा हाँ तो पूजा मन पूजा तू पूजा मन पूजा दिन लहव में होना तुझे शब सुबह तक सोना तुझे दिन लहव में खोना तुझे शब सुबह तक सोना तुझे शर में नबी खोफे खुदा शर में नबी खोफे खुदा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं तू कुंजा मन कुंजा और है बुलबुले रंगी रजा 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 है बुलबुले रंगी रजा है बुलबुले रंगी रजा सारा या तू तीये नगमा सारा हक ये के वासिप है तेरा हक ये के वासिप है तेरा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं तू कुंजा मन कुंजा Now today's topic, my dear viewers, was parenthood upbringing of children more importantly. There's a famous story which we've all heard that there was a child who traveled from one city to another. He was going to travel to Baghdad from Jilan. These are places in Iraq, my dear viewers of Madhidin Channel. He wasn't very young, he was. And this child, before leaving, his mother said, you know, now we shall see each other on the Day of Judgment. Meaning it's such a huge journey you are partaking. It's not something where nowadays you can, you know, go on a plane from one place to another. Within a few hours, there's also contact via phone. There was nothing as such, my dear, it was approximately a thousand years ago. So this child left, but before he left, his mother said something to him. He said, she said to him, that my child make me a promise, promise me something, promise me something. What is this? Promise me that no matter what happens, no matter what the situation, no matter what hardship you are in, you will always tell the truth. One thing, subhanAllah, but something which is very, very beautiful. Really, this is one thing is so, so beautiful, so, so important. That promise me one thing, what is this one thing? No matter what, you will always be truthful. You will always tell the truth. Now, this child, he leaves in this state. He leaves with a sum of money which has been sued into his court, into his clothing, my dear viewers. And he sets off on this journey. Now, during this journey, there were some, you could say, highway robbers, as you would call them. There were some highway robbers. And what did they do? They robbed the caravan of this child. 
they looted them, they robbed them of their belongings, of their money, etc. And then they approach each and every person, they ask them, do you have any money? You know, they'll search them. And somebody asks this child, you know, you wouldn't pay as much attention to a child as you would to anybody else. You wouldn't really expect the child to be having anything. But nevertheless, he said, have you got any money? Maybe they would have passed him by. Just have you got any money? If you do, quickly take it. And that child said, yes, I do have money. So this person thinking, you do have money. Wow, you're telling me you have money. Okay, where's your money? I don't see any money. I don't see anything with you. He says, I have some gold coins which have been stitched into my clothing. So they have been concealed. You cannot see them easily. If you were to search me, you may not be able to find them. But they are stitched within my clothing. Yes, I do have money. And it's mentioned, my dear viewers, that that person then he calls, you could say, his gang leader, the leader of the crew. And the leader of the crew also comes and asks him, you have 40 gold coins? 40 gold coins? This is a huge amount of money. Sued in. He says, yes, I do, you can look. And then when they discover that he's telling the truth, they say to him, oh son, what is the reason? Why tell us? You could have just, you could have just said, no, I don't have any money, you're a child. We wouldn't expect nothing more. We would just go past you. We would just go to the next person. What's the reason? Why did he tell us? You shouldn't have told us. And that child, he replies, he says that before I left my house, my mother asked me to keep a promise, to promise never to lie. No matter what the situation, no matter what happens, my mother asked me to never tell a lie, to never speak a lie. So remaining true to that promise, I could not lie, I had told you the truth. And these robbers, these people, these individuals, they think to themselves that you were a child, you could not disobey your mother, you remain true to your promise to your mother, then what is our situation where we had promised our Lord, where we have been given a duty by our Lord, by our Creator, but we do not, we do not remain true to that. And it's said that those people, they actually repented. Those people, they repented. And SubhanAllah, this was one of the marvels of this child who later became known as Ghose Pak Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu ta'ala anhu but the lesson my dear viewers is not of being truthful today yes undoubtedly we should always be truthful we should always tell the truth but that's not today's topic that's not today's lesson my dear viewers today's topic is the mother making her child promise this that out of all the things the mother could have said, generally what would a mother say? Remain safe, be careful. You know, if there's robbers, then you know, hide your money. And this is generally, even in this day and age, if we are to go abroad, our parents would tell us that, you know, don't keep your money in this pocket, you'll get people who pickpocket, and people, even if you were to go sadly to some places, which are noble places, but even in those places, there may be people who will rob you. <clears throat> don't keep it in this pocket, when they meet you, they may take your money. You know, these sort of things we hear. Always remain safe, don't trust strangers. And yes, in some ways, undoubtedly, that's, you know, a mother, a father, they care about the child, so for this reason, they would give them this advice. But out of all of these things, out of all of the things a mother could advise her child, she makes him promise one thing 
And this is that no matter what happens, no matter what the situation, always tell the truth. Subhanallah, that is beautiful, really. Out of all things, you know, she says, I shall see you on the day of judgment now. You are going, you are going far away, you are going in the quest for knowledge. I'm not asking you to do such and such, I'm not asking you to keep yourself to yourself. I'm not asking you to always do this, do not do that, no. One promise, make me one promise. That no matter what happens, you will be truthful. And my day view was, this message is so, so important because this one thing is something which can completely change. Yeah, honestly, this is a beautiful thing, alhamdulillah, about the teachings of Islam. Is that sometimes you just take one teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this can really work wonders, really. By acting on one hadith sharif, respecting your elders. That will change, if everybody respected their elders, it will change the entire world. Respecting your neighbors, love for your brother what you love for yourself. This one hadith sharif, honestly, it works wonders, it will change everything. If everybody had that love for their brother, what they love for themselves. They would never harm their brother. They would never speak bad about their brother. Why? Because nobody would wish for anybody to speak bad about them. Whatever they would buy, they would share with each other. There would be love, there would be mutual respect. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu always be truthful. Don't lie. You know, lying is wrong, my dear viewers. If everybody was to act upon this, and even if they were to make a mistake, even if they were to do something wrong, they would be truthful about it. And if they were to be truthful about it, this would solve so many issues. So many problems it would solve, my dear viewers. Just telling the truth. This is one, another example of acting upon one hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and it making a huge change. Alhamdulillah, that's why we have our daily hadith sharif each and every single day. For us to learn the ahadith, the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But my dear viewers, sadly, what do we teach our children in this day and age? What do we teach our children? Sometimes, you know, because I'm speaking, I have... I know about those people within the United Kingdom, so I can really give examples for those. You know, there will be people watching in other countries, I don't know your situation. But many a times it will be the same. What happens? Somebody has called. Somebody has called my phone, somebody has called the house phone, and the child has picked up the phone, you know, say, how are you, etc., whatever it is. They'll give salam. Is your father there? Is your mother there? And the mother, the father will ask, who is it? They'll say, such and such person. Tell him I'm not here. Tell him I'm asleep. Tell them I'm doing something. Now your child sees you. You are not asleep. You are awake. But you are telling me to say to him, that you are asleep. You are telling me to lie to him. Which means that there's no harm in lying. Or whenever it feels comfortable for you, whenever it suits you, then you can lie. So you are teaching your child that it is okay to lie. My dear viewers, this is what we are teaching our children. You know, we need to drop our children to school. We are late. The child says, look, you know, dad, we're late. Mom, we're late. What am I going to do? What am I going to say to the teachers? Or to say to them, you know, the car broke down. Classic example, say to them the car broke down. The child knows the car did not break down. The child knows the car did not break down. You are teaching them to lie to other people when it suits them, when it suits you. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, upbringing of children, extremely, extremely important. This child who told the truth became known as Ghosi Azam, Ghosi Pak. Yes, it was none other than Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jilani. That same child who in his mother's stomach, he memorized 18 
parts of the Quran, 18 paras as we would call them, 18 juz of the Quran, arzab of the Quran, my dear viewers, 18 of them. Why? Because the mother would be, had recited, had memorized 18 and she would recite them regularly. And while she would recite them, the child would hear and listen to them in the stomach. So this enabled him to memorize them at a, well, to have already memorized them while she was in the mother's stomach. What does this come to? It comes to parenting. It comes to parenting, my dear viewers. The, and I've spoken about this before, in fact, that even whilst the child is in the mother's stomach, then the mother's emotions, the mother's speech, the mother's actions all have an effect on the child. If the mother is sad, this makes the child sad. Yes, psychologically the child can feel it. It's said that, you know, the child can even taste the food the mother eats. But if he was, the child knows if there's always arguments between the mother and the father, then the child is used to these things. He said even the language you speak, for example, if I was to speak the English language, then the child automatically has an inclination towards English language. Why? Because the child heard that whilst it was in the mother's stomach. So that becomes familiar to the child. So the child is more inclined to that language rather than another language. It has more love for that particular language. So there are huge effects even before the birth of the child which the mother has upon the child, my dear viewers. Those mothers who may be smoking, who may be taking other things, this is, you know, this becomes detrimental to the child. Today's lesson, my dear viewers, today's topic is parenting. It is absolutely important for us. What is the best example of parenting? You know, I've given examples of what you should not do. You should not teach your children to lie. What should you do? And Alhamdulillah, when it comes to what you should do, my dear viewers, it is not difficult, it is quite simple, it is quite easy. We have the religion of Islam. And you are to teach your children the religion of Islam. The basics of Islam, the fundamentals of Islam, those things which are congruent to the teachings, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the teachings, the actions, the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they're the things you should teach your child. Those things which are contrary, contradicting the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then you should tell your child not to go towards such things. This is the simple answer, my dear viewers. And the result, the fruit, inshallah, you too shall benefit from. This is the beauty. In that if you are going to give your child a upbringing in accordance to the religion of Islam, yes, it's going to benefit your child, but it's also going to benefit you. Whereas if you think that all I wish for is for my child to, you know, go with society, the way everybody else is acting, to be with them, to be like them, then a time may come when you will suffer the consequences, the ramifications of doing this. You don't teach them about Islam. You see, with Islam comes respect for the parents. With Islam comes respect for the elders. With Islam, you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when you look at your father, when you look at your mother with happiness, you gain the reward of a Hajj, my dear viewers. Respecting them when they come to the room to stand up, to kiss their hands upon shaking them, to kiss the feet of the mother. So it's you that's going to benefit if you give them the teachings of Islam. It's said that there was once, subhanAllah, we shall first, inshallah, will go to our daily reminder and then we shall continue on our topic. Let's move to our reminder. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. The Prophet of mankind, the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous in kind, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, O people, indeed, the person to receive prompt relief from anxiety and accountability on the day of judgment 
will be the one who would have recited the rood upon me in abundance in this world. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My sweet brothers and viewers of Mindy Channel, it is narrated that a pious person once acquired a golden brick, fascinated and captivated by its newly found wealth. He began to fantasize about his future. He spent all night planning, thinking of delicious and exquisite cuisines, fancy and expensive attire, and a number of servants ready to serve all his needs, enchanted by the newly found wealth, and thus fantasizing about a luxurious life. He remained entirely heedless of Allah Azza wa Jal. The next morning, when he left his home, mesmerized by the possibility that awaited him, he came across a graveyard. There he saw a man kneading clay on top of a grave to make bricks. Instantly, the man came back to his senses and his veil of heedlessness was lifted. He began to weep as he thought, some day others will make bricks from the soil of my grave as well. Whoa! My luxurious abode and my fancy attire will all be left behind. If I fall for this fantastic world that this gold brick will bring me, it will only lead to heedlessness life. If I have to fall in love, I should fall in love with my Allah Azza wa Jal. Hence he abandoned the brick of gold and adopted the life of piety, full of abstinence. My sweet Islamic brothers, this pious person found a golden brick. And then when he saw it in the grave, he realized that what the brick is going to bring and where is he going to end up. My sweet Islamic brothers, we are running in this world. We are running, making money, more money, more, and it never stops. My sweet Islamic brothers, we are not going to take anything with us apart from two pieces of cloth and our book of deeds. And may Allah give our book of deeds in our right hand, not in our left hand or behind our back. My sweet Islamic brothers, wake up to reality. We are all going to die and we will enter the dark grave. So my sweet Islamic brothers and viewers of Mindy Channel, we need to work towards our hereafter. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam my dear viewers alhamdulillah you are watching rise and shine now it's mentioned that there was once a person and this is something which does not justify which does not justify an act but it is a lesson for us it is a lesson for us it said that there was a person who was a well-known thief he was a robber he was very well known very famous to be known as a thief and he would harm a lot of people he would possibly even kill people now his mother was very ill, she was on the brinks of, you could say, close to passing away. He wanted to see his mother, they allowed him, okay, you know, I will go see my mother. They were thinking, you know, his, his mother's very ill, he may be emotional, his mother's about to die. So they allow him to see his mother. Now when he goes to see his mother, he said that he pounces on his mother, he attacks his own mother. Now, my dear viewers, this is not something which can ever be justified. You know, you are not ever allowed to harm your parents, whatever the case, whatever the matter. He pounces on his mother and he harms his mother. He hits his mother. Later he is asked, what is the reason you did, you did this? She's your own mother. 
She's about to die and this is what you've done? And the answer he gave is, Subhanallah, really it's a, it's a lesson for many people. He says the reason for this is because when I was young, sometimes when I would go places, sometimes when I would go to learn how to read and write, I would steal, you know, little, little things. Sometimes I'll just steal a pen. I would steal a pencil. And then I would bring it back and when my mother would hear, you know, she would smile. And then I thought, you know, okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. So let's just take some other things. And then he began to steal and he began to make it regular. Why? Because his mother approved of him doing that little, little action which he initially did. And when she found out, she didn't reprimand him, but rather she, in a way, approved of it. If she's smiling and she's not reprimanding him, this is approving it, my dear viewers. She approved of it. So then he continued to do it. And he continued so much so that then he began to rob people. He began to steal big things, expensive things. He began to harm people whilst doing it, maybe even kill people. And this is what his life became. And he blamed this on his mother. For this reason, he pounced on his mother. Now, this does not justify the action he did. He pounced on his mother. This is wrong. But this is a lesson to all those parents who may think, and really this sometimes does happen. I've also seen it with teachers. So we may sometimes have a very strict teacher, and we may sometimes have a very, very soft teacher who doesn't really say anything. And sometimes we think, yes, that strict teacher, although he was strict, although we hated him at the time, but now we think he was a very, very good teacher. And some people think the same of their parents. Where their parents, whatever they did, you know, we need to find a middle path. I'm not saying you should always, you know, be harsh to your ch children, you should always be strict to your children. No, I'm not saying this. But what I am saying is that there's a middle path and you should adopt the middle path. Because there are some parents who, they never bothered about what their children did. If their children ever did anything wrong, they would not reprimand them. Sometimes, yes, even they would, you know, support it. Or you hit the child, you did good, son. How, how badly did you hit him? These are the sort of things we do. Or, you know, tell them to lie, you just lie to them. So these are the things we are teaching our children. And he said that children, you know, it is the same thing. That if you were to plant a seed, that seed was later to, you know, grow into a first a stem and then maybe even a tree, if it was a tree you planted. At first, you would see some people where they, you know, hold strings around it in, a, in order to allow it to grow in a particular way. They would be able to control its growth. But if you were to leave it, then what would happen to it? It would either die or it would go in all sorts of directions. It wouldn't be neat, it wouldn't be proper. Maybe it wouldn't even be able to grow. It wouldn't get enough sun. But you can control it. When can you control it? When that plant is still fresh, when it's still new, when it's still in its early stages. But if that was to become a tree, then is there any way you're going to change it from one direction to another? No, my dear viewers. You are going to have to cut it. It is the same with your children and their upbringing. Some people we say, oh, it's fine, he's only a child, he's lied, but he's only a child. You know, when he grows up, we'll tell him he shouldn't lie. Other children, they steal things, oh, he's only a child, he's only stole this little thing. He's hit you, oh, he's only a child, it's okay. If this is what we are going to be like, if this is how we are going to reciprocate when our children do wrong, then what are we teaching them? that it's okay to do it. And then they will continue to do it. And it will become a habit of theirs. Some people, yes, it becomes a habit stealing. They cannot help themselves. Some people, they cannot help themselves. Why? Because they're so used to it. 
It is our job as parents. Sometimes we think, oh, let's, let's just take them to the cinemas. They're only young, there's no harm. And nowadays, cartoons which they watch, honestly, Allahu Akbar. Very, very saddening, my dear viewers. What's being taught in them cartoons? What's being taught in the cartoons that children are watching in this day and age? Very, very sad, really. We need to actually sit down with our children and see what they are watching. Because some of the things they are watching are not good, they're not even suitable for young children. Although we may think, oh yes, it's cartoon, so it's fine. No, my dear viewers, some of the games they are playing, they're not suitable for them. Some of them even have you know, age restrictions on them. But yet we see our children play, we think, oh, it's only a game, it's only playing a game. No, my dear viewers. If we're going to allow it now, then it's going to develop into something else. As again, all you think, oh no, this is child stuff, I want to go to the next level. I want to watch this now. So you think, oh no, it's fine, just let them watch this now. And then later, oh, it's a kiddie movie. And then later in their life, it will stop them from watching movies, will stop them from listening to music, will stop them from doing this. No. Right now is your time to have an effect, to do your job. Because later, my dear viewers, you may not be able to do so. It's mentioned once Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he was walking past a, a grave and he saw this person was being punished in the grave. Later, once again, Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he walks by the same grave and he sees that this person now, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being showered upon the grave. This person is now being rewarded. So he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, Ya Allah, why is this? Why is it that before, whenever he passed before, I passed before and this person was being punished. Now I've passed on this person. He is being rewarded. Your rahmat, your mercy is being showered upon him, Ya Allah. What is the reason for this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that O oh Isa, the reason for this is because when he died, he died a sinner. He died, he committed many sins throughout his life and then he died upon that. But when he died, his wife was pregnant, she was having a child and later the child was born. And after some time, the child went to learn the book, whatever the book of the time was. And the child recited Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And I had Haya, my mercy was being showered upon him. Why? Because how could I punish a man in his grave? whilst his child is reciting my name on the land. How could I punish a servant in his grave, a man in his grave, whilst his child is reciting my name, whilst his child is reciting the name of Allah, whilst his child is reciting Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahu Akbar. This person in his grave, his whole we cannot stand the minutest pain or punishment in the grave. The least of punishments, my dear viewers. And this person who is being punished, it all changed due to his child reciting Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now we are one day going to die. If we are going to, yes, it's brilliant, you know, give your children education, secular education, yes, very good. Make your children into doctors, yes, very good. Make them into engineers, yes, very good. Make them into computer engineers, whatever it may be. That's brilliant. But don't forget that what should be given preference is not these things, but rather Islam. What's going to benefit us when we die? Many people, you know, when they die, the children do not know. Yes, they go to the grave, but they do not know what to recite. They're not able to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. They're not able to recite Surah Yasin. If you are not going to teach them, then when you die, who's going to come to your grave? Who's going to recite? Tell me, will that, him being a doctor help him? 
Will it help you in your grave? No, it will not. You must give your children a good upbringing. And what is a good, good upbringing? Shall be coming, inshallah, we shall get to that. The first Madi views of Madani channel, Alhamdulillah, we have our daily hadith shrif. Remember, each and every single hadith shrif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you know, is of utmost importance. If we are to implement it, really, if we are to try to act upon it, it will change our last Madi views. Let's listen to today's Hadith Sharif. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, inshallah azawajal, in today's daily hadith, we will hear about a very important element of our lives. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu has reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Ya'ti ala nasi zamanun. A time will come upon the people. La yubali al mar'u ma akhaza minhu. When one will not care where he attains his wealth from, whether he attains it through permissible means or impermissible means, halal or haram. No doubt, one of the obligation upon a Muslim is that he earns for himself and his family a pure and halal sustenance. On one occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam did not sleep all night. So Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha asked, O Messenger of Allah, what has caused you to stay awake all night? The best of mankind sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied that I found a date last night and I ate it. Then I remembered that we had in our house some dates that were meant for charity. So I feared that the date I ate was from the dates that were to be given to charity. Subhanallah, what does this go to show? Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam ate one date, forgetting that he had some dates in his house that were meant for charity and this caused them to have a sleepless night just out of fear that this date may have been from the dates of the charity so this accidental morsel caused our beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much unrest and so much discomfort in reality this serves as a lesson for us this is a teaching within this there is a teaching for us those of us who may be earning such a living that comes from a means of haram and yet we enjoy a deep sleep at night and like this we have countless accounts of various sahaba kiram and awliya uh, who too are great role models even in just safeguarding themselves from doubtful food and sustenance halal sustenance is the means of attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also His Azzawajal's protection. It's the mean of getting all our lawful du'as answered and also and truly a means of being honored on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the pursuit of seeking halal sustenance easy upon all of us. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers, alhamdulillah, that was today's hadith shrib. Now, quickly coming back to our topic, give Giving our children a good upbringing. Please try to teach your children to pray salah. You know, when children are young, then automatically they join the parents in whatever the parents do. If the parents, are, you know, have covered their heads, they have made their ablution, and then they are on the masalla, the you know, the prayer mat, and the children they also wish to the same. You know, they say, "Can I let me put a hat on my head?" Let me do my ablution, they'll, they'll wipe it, you know, they'll wash their faces. And mashallah, they'll join their father, join their mother. 
praying their salah. This is the upbringing we should give our children. This is the time and day it was when they are young. Please do in accordance to Islam. And one thing you can do, inshallah, watch rise and shine. This could be the first thing of your day with your children. Watch rise and shine. Inshallah, we shall be having topics and shall be speaking about things, you know, the life of Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Things which, inshallah, stories which your children will hopefully enjoy. That's all for now, my dear viewers. Keep this one in mind that rise and shine by sending salutations upon the greatest of mankind. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah